Moi, ah, ah, ah. It is your witchy friend Grace from Small Worlds Big Adventures with a little spooktober announcement before our heart-stopping game review of Last Night on Earth. This week and the next two weeks, we will be giving away a game from our personal collection. This week's game is Alice is Missing, a heart-stopping role-playing game about a local missing girl. To qualify, you must live in the United States and comment on at least one video this week, October 8th through 14th. We will then randomly choose a winner from the comments. Speaking of winner, last week, Pickle Buckeye is the winner of Unlocked, The House on the Hill. So congrats to him and thank you for commenting. Also, everyone who comments throughout the month from the 1st to the 30th will be entered for a brand new copy of Horrified, a maddening cooperative board game with iconic monsters. We will announce the winner by commenting on one of the person's comments and announcing on each Sunday's video, like this one, who has won the game of the week. The more videos you comment on, the greater your chance to win. So let us know your thoughts on each game. Hi, I'm Gracie, and this is Scott from Small Worlds Big Adventures, building community through gaming. And today, we're going to review Last Night on Earth. Last Night on Earth is a game for two to six players. It plays in 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, you can find it for about $50 on Amazon. Uh, setup, teardown is about 10 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, the game is basically one to two people play as zombies, and the other people play as humans who are running around on a board trying to survive, essentially while the zombies try to get them. There are, I think, six scenarios in the box that are all a little bit different, and uh, some of them are actually pretty pretty clever. Nice. Um, zombie apocalypse is a very big, like, horror-themed trope, especially with board games and movies. But we're curious, who would you bring into the zombie apocalypse? And would they run slower than you so that you could survive? Uh, when we write games, we have a five-point scale from terrible, bad, mixed, good up to excellent and to kick us off we're going to talk about player agency um i feel like it's mixed you also said mixed but we have it for different reasons um for me uh i don't feel like there's actually all that much the humans can do besides run and hide or find things and fight now mind you you have the whole board to do that um and i will preface this with not huge on zombies so that could have some biases there but why did you say mixed uh, I said mix because the zombie side doesn't really have a whole lot of options. Um, you kind of just gather up zombies and then rush them at people, and then either you win those fights or you don't win those fights. Uh, the humans have quite a bit more. Uh, they're searching houses, they're getting equipment that they can do different things with. Most of the time, that different thing is killing zombies, but uh, you know you can heal yourself, you can run around the board. You know you you've got. Oh, 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 de decent range of things that you're doing, but uh, not a ton of different things. And the, the way the zombies work just doesn't, doesn't give you a lot of things to do. So. Yeah. I think part of it comes down to is like when you are swamped by zombies, like you can either fight, hope you roll well so you can run far enough away they're not going to get to you next turn or heal. Um, but if you don't run away and you don't fight well, like you're just stuck there. Yeah. Which yeah. happens to me a lot. I mean, yeah. they're zombies. They're hordes of zombies. <laughs> uh, mechanics wise, I said mixed. Um, again, it kind of comes down to the player agency aspect of it. Um, also, like it comes down to dice rolls, which isn't my favorite. Um, I am sure later down the road, there will be another game that comes down to dice rolls and you will call me a hypocrite. <laughs> Hopefully uh, not out of order. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, but uh, if you don't roll well, then it's just it kind of SOL. So, but you think that mechanics are good? Yeah, uh, I, I do think the mechanics work pretty decent. They're honestly, at the end of the day, pretty basic. Yeah. Uh, most of what the humans can do are move and search until you get cards that let you do some other different things. The zombies mostly just gather up and charge. The zombies also get a handful of cards that let them do some special things. Most of the time it's get more zombies or move a little bit further or fight better in combat, but it gives you a few more options. Um, you know, it's a nice grid 
tabletop yeah. map that you can run around on. So there's quite a few, quite a few spaces to go. Uh, I, I think it works pretty pretty decently. I, I get the idea of not liking the randomness of rolling for things. A lot of the games that we play, we kind of avoid that. We do kind of prefer, oh, I, I did this and got this kind of yeah. games. But uh, I don't mind it so much in this. It's, it's all right. Yeah. I think the me mechanics work good. Um, as far as components, I think components are good. Uh, they have actual photos on the cards, which are very like late 90s, early 2000s, reminiscent horror movie photos, which is nice. They have little figures for both the people and the zombies. So yeah, they're good. Yeah, the art on the board is uh, good. Yeah. It's it's solid for here's a building that you can go mm -hmm. into and stuff. Like you said, the the art for the cards is all photos from almost like it's from a movie that they've, yeah. they've made to do this, which is cute, and the figures uh, work well. Uh, I cannot imagine that photo shoot, though. Like, <laughs> these look like a horrified cheerleader. Yep. Um, and then uh, theming is good. Yeah. It seems like a zombie movie. Theming, theming is good. It's, yeah. it's pretty basic, but it's, it works well into... Uh, what they're going for, which yeah. is here's a horde of zombies and here's humans trying to survive this yeah. horde of zombies. Um, and it definitely feels very like reminiscent of like old school zombie movies versus like the newer ones. Mm -hmm. um, and with the like character tropes too, of like the characters that people can play. There's yep. the cheerleader, the jock, the well begrudged sheriff that I'm sure has a horrible backstory. <laughs> um, as far as enjoyability goes, I don't like it. I hate zombies. Mm -hmm. So tired and tedious. And when I think about the other zombie games we have, like Dead of Winter. Dead of Winter? Mm -hmm. That's more enjoyable, but I think I just I hate zombies. Yeah, fair. You you rated this bad. Bad. I uh, rated it bad. I rate it good. I like this game. It it plays quick. Uh, everybody's turns are pretty fast. Yeah, uh, yeah they're, it's not exactly a in-depth simulator like Dead of Winter is, but it is more complex and more fleshed out than, say, Zombies is. Yeah. So it's kind of a nice, comfortable middle between those two games mm -hmm. in, in a lot of ways. Um, the game itself has uh, a number of scenarios that, while the first one is a little bit boring, kind of add stuff to it. Um, and so, full transparency. I've only played the first one. Yep. The first scenario we, we keep starting the game with a new set of players every time <laughs> and haven't had a chance to move on with an experienced yeah. group into any of the other but you I've, des, I've played more yeah before, but yeah uh, you and des enjoyed it a lot des <laughs> says it's one of his favorite games yeah so. I, I, I like it um final thoughts wise if you like zombies like it's probably your vibe <laughs> not my vibe there's nothing inherently like wrong or bad where i'm like this is a shit game like, it's just for, I don't enjoy the theming. Yeah, you know? fair. Uh, I like this. Uh, this is a easy suggest. This is an easy pickup. Um, the scenarios add quite a bit to it. Uh, the first one is kind of boring. It's literally the humans have to kill 15 zombies before time runs out, basically. Uh, but you get into one where you have to fuel up a broken down truck to escape. Uh, one of the neatest ones is you can flip, the board is modular. You can flip the center of the board over and there's an old farmhouse. And the scenario is you defend the farmhouse as long as you can until dawn, uh, which is a cool setup. Um, this does do a good job of sitting in between more thematically heavy games like yeah. Dead of Winter and more kind of simplistic games like Zombies does. Uh, there's at least one expansion to it, uh, so you can flesh out your zombie fun even more. Uh, yeah, I, I like the game. Awesome. Um, if you like Zombies, or Dead of Winter, both zombie-themed games. <laughs> You're probably going to like this. Um, mainly because of theming, both games' dynamics are very different. Zombies a little closer. You're kind of yeah. a guy moving around on a grid shooting zombies, yeah. and that's that's similar to this. Dead of Winter is pretty different. You don't roll for the zombies in that one. You you just get to kill them if you're if you're killing zombies. You roll for them. Frostbite. Whether they bite you or yeah. not, but mm -hmm. that's different. Uh, you also, if you like Betrayal at House on the Hill, yeah. you might enjoy this you kind of have an aspect of uh, searching searching for items to help yeah. you survive the evil that is trying to get you um but if uh you are intrigued at how a couple like us could be so divided on a game like this 
go ahead and like this video. If you want to see more board game reviews, even ones about zombies, uh, or hear GameKeeper tips, walkthroughs, things like that, you can go ahead and subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified next time we upload. If there's nothing else. We'll see you next time.